I've been shot under odd circumstance and critically injured shot three times while in service in Bosnia and I had the round enter in through the top underneath my eye and went through the cheek and blew the corner out of the bottom jaw and went down the neck nicked the carotid artery uh, bounced off the scapula, bounced off the collarbone into the top of the shoulder, uh, shattered the shoulder, bounced into the scapula, uh, shattered the scapula, broke two ribs at the back, then went through the back of the right lung, through the back of the heart, sky in the back of the heart, punctured the top of the left lung, right and left side, broke two ribs, left side, third and fourth down, and then bounced off the rib cage through lower diaphragm, scraped my stomach, punctured my intestine, and then came to rest by my kidney. I was a different person before I got shot. I was a young lad, 19, outgoing, happy, the world was my oyster, not a problem. By the time I got out of hospital, I was depressed, I was disfigured, I was injured, disabled, useless. I couldn't do what I, what I wanted to do. There was too many barriers. And then I became self-loathing. I hated myself for, for being the way I was. And guilty. After injury, I was uh, returned to unit. And now I was seeking medical treatments. I put Catrick and Frimley military hospitals. Um, in 97, I was transferred to a TA unit. Uh, remained there until 2000, when I was medically discharged from the forces due to injury and uh, post-traumatic stress. At the beginning, it was, it was really quite turbulent. After my first child was born, it did get considerably worse within the first year of her life was one of the worst times that we've ever been through. She cried a lot and that was very difficult because she'd cry, I'd cry, and he'd get really violent and it was like, oh wow, what do I do now? So, you know, sometimes I'd sort of stand and argue and then other times it was just too scary. Things that I didn't think had, had bothered me that much or had actually affected me now do quite strongly and they affect my family life an awful lot. Um, simple things like children cry, screaming, normal child noises, you know. It all brings back unpleasant memories. The way I felt back then was very, very strong for me. I had a lot of emotion, a lot of things that deeply upset me. That's I can never forget, I can't switch them off. Kids burst a balloon at a party. And I'm I'm up on the I'm off, you know, I'm I'm back living flashbacks, pain and this is a kid's party. You know, they're having fun, it's their birthday. And there's dad in the corner having a nervous breakdown. It's it's like how do you explain that to people that you've you've only just met and you know you're supposed to be looking after their children while they're having a party. Fortunately, my wife is one of my biggest saviours. I really couldn't function without her. Not for the fact that I couldn't do anything on my own. She's just, she's everything. You know, I confess my sins, tell her my fears, explain my emotions, share my nightmares, and she doesn't have to understand, she just has to listen. And she does. He, he does care. He, ca he cares about, obviously, what has happened to him. He cares about, you know, what he has seen. And in the military, there are blokes who, who don't care. They don't, they, you know, they've seen awful things. And they get up and they live a normal life. And they don't care about it. They're the ones that are scary, not Eddie. <laughs> I'm glad I, I stuck with it because I know now that 
I wouldn't. I don't think I'd ever leave now. I don't think I'd. I don't think there's anything now that I wouldn't stand up and go through with him. After the first phase, after passionate nights and intimate days, only then would he let me trace the frozen river that ran through his face. Only then would he let me explore the blown hinge of his lower jaw and handle and hold the damaged porcelain collarbone and mine and attend the fractured rudder of shoulder blade and finger and thumb the parachute silk of his punctured lung. Only then could I bind the struts and climb the rungs of his broken ribs and feel the hurt of his grazed heart. Skirting along, only then could I picture the scan, the fetus of metal beneath his chest, where the bullet had finally come to rest. Then I widen the search, trace the scarring back to the source, to a sweating and exploded mine, buried deep within his mind, around which every nerve in his body tightened and closed. Then, and only then, did I come close.